Uh, this is joint work with Arvin Magesan at uh, University of Calgary. Uh, the Euler equation uh, GMM uh, approach uh, uh, developed by Hansen and Singleton in their seminal paper was one of the key uh, uh, developments in the in the econometrics of dynamic structural models and in particular for the estimation of continuous decision structural models. Uh, more than 30 years after the publication of this paper, um, we can uh, still claim that, that this method has uh, substantial advantages or some substantial advantage relative to, to alternative estimation methods in this literature. Uh, I'm going to, to emphasize one particular advantage because that's the, the, uh, one of the focus of this paper. And is that this, this, uh, this method avoids the, the course of dimensionality associated to the uh, computational cost of calculating value functions uh, uh, when the uh, dimension of the state space increases. In particular, the estimation of, of, uh, of the structural parameters in this type of models, given a data and given uh, a particular parametrization of a model, is exactly the same, the computational cost is exactly the same regardless of what is the dimension of the state space, whether we have 100 possible values or we have mm, larger than the number of atoms in the universe as, as possible number of, of the state variables. The computational cost is exactly the same. And definitely this is, this is an important advantage. There are other advantages associated to, to the, to the Euler equations GMN approach, for instance, related to, to you just presentation yesterday, what we have is that uh, uh, in models that are non-stationary or where there are some aggregate uh, state variables, uh, we do not need to specify the sto stochastic process of these state variables to estimate uh, the parameters of the model using Euler equations. And in that sense, the, the estimation can be more robust uh, uh, when using Euler equations. These are the advantages that I want to emphasize. Now, there are some well-known limitations in this uh, uh, associated with the Hansen and Singleton uh, GMM Euler equation approach. Um, and let me also concentrate in two of these limitations because that, uh, these, these are the, the limitations that motivate this paper. The first is that the common wisdom uh, since the development of, the, of, of this, this methodology was that uh, we cannot apply uh, Euler equations for the estimation of dynamic discrete choice models because yes, they are not marginal conditions of optimality associated to uh, discrete choice models. And the, it, and the second limitation is that, uh, well, at the end, we want to estimate our, uh, our structural models to do counterfactual experiments. And when doing counterfactual and to do a counterfactual experiment, we cannot avoid by, but solving uh, uh, the, the original model. And in that, uh, in that context, we are back to the problem of, of the course of dimensionality. And, um, Policy iteration in the Euler equation is not a good idea in this context because in continuous choice uh, dynamic decision models, it's well known that in general, uh, the policy iteration mapping is not a contraction mapping. Then we can, in general, we, 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 we are not sure that we are going to be able to solve for the, for the optimal solution of the model by using a policy iteration in the Euler equation, okay? And these are two of the limitations of the, or these are the two limitations of the GMM Euler uh, equation approach that motivates this paper. And in this context, what are the, the contributions of this paper? First, uh, we develop Euler equations for dynamic discrete choice models, for a general class of dynamic discrete choice models that we are going to see. The second is that um, based on this derivation of the Euler equation for discrete choice models, we define uh, what we call a Euler policy iteration mapping that can be used to solve the dynamic discrete choice model. And uh, we prove that uh, for models like the multinomial logit, the binary probit, or the binary logit, uh, this policy iteration mapping is a contraction mapping, okay? Uh, third, we prove that uh, solving for the solution of this type of model using this Euler equation policy iteration mapping implies substantial computational advantage relative to value function iteration or a standard policy iteration mapping. 
Fourth, we use this Euler policy iteration mapping to de define a, uh, a, a family of, of sequential estimator that is very similar to the family of the sequential estimator that I have developed with in my work with, with Pedro, but where now we are replacing the standard policy iteration mapping with this, uh, with this uh, Euler equation policy iteration mapping. As, as I will try to, to, to convince you, the, there's uh, substantial computational gains associated with, with, with this. And, and finally, uh, uh, we define a sample-based version of this Euler equation policy iteration mapping that we can use to estimate counterfactual experiments. And this sample-based uh, policy iteration mapping gives us root and consistent estimates of the counterfactual, but they are not subject at all to the course of dimensionality. Okay. And these are the, the, the contributions of this paper. I will start briefly because these are very well-known models for people in this audience with a description of the class of models. I will describe the, the derivation of the main ideas for the derivation of the Euler equations. I will define the Euler equation policy iteration mapping, the sequential estimator, the sample-based policy iteration for the counterfactuals, and hopefully I will have time to present some numerical experiments and some Monte Carlo, okay? Then the model is, is, uh, is the standard discrete choice single agent model. Um, uh, we have an action A that belongs to this discrete choice set of J plus one alternatives. Every time T, the decision maker chooses this action to maximize the expected and discounted uh, payoff. A payoff depends on the actions and the vector of a state variable S that follows this Markov process, and we have this Bellman equation that defines this decision problem. Okay? The vector of a state variables can be separated in two parts, the observable part and the unobservable part for the researcher. Uh, we make the uh, standard assumption, or the so-called RAS assumptions, on these unobservables, additive separability and conditional independence. And under that, these assumptions, we can characterize the optimal decision rule using this uh, threshold condition on the unobservables, okay? We have the conditional choice value functions that do not depend on the unobservable epsilon, and we have these additive unobservables, okay? All the results that I'm going to present today apply to an extension of this model where we, in addition to this epsilon unobservable, we have finite mixture models type of unobservables that ap ap appear in the pi part of the function. What is a very common uh, type of model that has been uh, developed by Exen and Wolpin and, 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 and applied in many different applications, okay? Okay, then uh, the trick to derive all the equations in our model is to transform this discrete choice model in a continuous choice model. And the continuous choice model is in terms of, of choice probabilities, okay? Then let me uh, define a choice probabilities given a, a decision rule, an arbitrary decision rule that depends on the state variables, we can define an integrated version of this decision rule that is just the choice probability, where we are integrating the decision rule over the distribution of the unobservables epsilon, okay? And also, uh, given an arbitrary decision rule alpha, we can define a integrated versions of the one period payoff this integration version is pi e, and integrated versions of the transition probabilities of the state variables, okay? Integrated over the distribution of epsilon for a given uh, a, a decision rule alpha, okay? It turns out, and this is, uh, we, uh, we owe this to, to Hodge Miller, that, uh, that, um, uh, that we can represent these integrated mm, versions of, of this payoff function and transition probabilities in terms not only of the, not, not of the alphas, of the decision rule, but in terms of the choice probabilities th that I have defined before, okay? And we have this uh, integrated payoff function, this integrated transition probabilities, now in terms of the choice probabilities. And now we can define a, a dynamic decision problem in terms of this choice probability. Suppose that we take this or in terms of this object. Suppo suppose that we take this expected or integrated payoff function, this integrated uh, transition probability functions, and we define a dynamic decision problem now where the choices are the choice probabilities themselves, okay? This is a well-defined dynamic decision problem now in terms of choice probabilities uh, instead of actions, 
and we will have a solution uh, that is a solution in terms of a decision rule in terms of choice probabilities, okay? Well, the solutions to this problem, this integrated version of the problem, is unique, of course, and is just the integrated version of our original problem, okay? Then we can, for the rest of, of, of my presentation, I will be working with this problem instead of the original problem. And it's a problem in terms of choice probabilities. Okay, then given now this problem, we are going to derive Euler equations uh, for this uh, continuous choice decision problem in terms of choice probabilities. We cannot use this most standard approach to derive Euler equations that is combining first order condition of optimality with an envelope uh, condition. We are going to use something a little bit different that is to define the following constraint optimization problem, okay? Then this constraint optimization problem is we choose choice probabilities at period t and period t plus one, in principle they could be different, to maximize the payoff at period t and the expected payoff at period t plus one, subject to the constraint that the distribution of the state variables at period t plus two is the same as the distribution of these state variables under the optimal choice, under the optimal choice probabilities, okay? Then by construction, the only solution to this constraint optimization problem is are the choice probabilities that are the solution to the original dynamic decision problem. Basically what we are doing, using here is the one, one period deviation principle. Everything after period t plus two is going to be the same because this constraint, then you cannot increase in a dynamic decision problem, we cannot improve your payoff in two periods if you deviate just one period from the respect to this optimal decision and you behave exactly the same after period t plus two, okay? Then the Lagrange conditions of this constraint optimization problem should be uh, satisfied by the optimal choice probabilities in an, our original problem, okay? Then we have these Lagrange marginal conditions of optimality. What are the Euler equations? The Euler equation is taking these Lagrangian conditions of optimality and getting rid of the Lagrange multiplier, such that at the end we have conditions that involve only payoff functions at period t, payoff functions at period t plus one, and choice probabilities at period t and period t plus one, okay? How can we, do, can we do that? Well, we derive necessary and sufficient conditions for the derivation of these Euler equations. Uh, this is a little bit technical, but basically these necessary and sufficient conditions depend on the structure of the transition probabilities of the endogenous state variables, okay? Then let me define the matrix F tilde at period t plus one that has as elements this difference between the transitions probabilities from period t plus one to period t for different possible actions relative to the transition probability with respect to a baseline alternative, alternative zero points, okay? Then this matrix contains these elements where at every row we have the probabilities for different values of x t plus two and at dif the different, sorry, at different columns and at different rows we have uh, the all the possible values of xt plus one and actions that we can visit at period t plus one given that we start the process at period t, okay? Then are necessary and sufficient conditions to be able to get rid of these Lagrange multipliers and derive these Euler equations is that this matrix has full column rank, okay? Do we have an intuition for this? Unfortunately not, or yes, but the intuition comes from, comes from <laughs> relating our results to, to, to the work, to the finite state dependent property by, by Archie Diacono uh, and, and Bob. Um, uh, is this more general or less general than the finite state dependence? Is more general than the original finite state dependence in the paper in 2001, but uh, we now believe that probably they are equivalent, but we don't have a result yet. But, but I think that, that we are, if I don't think that our definition is going to be more, gen, more general, substantially more general than the 
uh, one uh, that the finite state dependence in RT are going to be there and probably they are completely equivalent and therefore we have two alternative representations. Okay? Okay, what is. Yes, um, yep. So you, you would get that if you, if you derive the Euler equation with the calculus of variation, you would have that because you are moving Tt and Tt plus 1 in order to get the same Tt plus 2. So that, that would be the analog to, to that. That's right, that's right. So it's a way of deriving the Euler equation uh, differently from the marginal condition. So it's a few. What do you mean by Ct? Uh, uh, well, the Ct would be consumption. And Okay. Times t plus one. So you would move ct and t plus one, given that ct plus two is fixed. And exactly. You exactly. That's exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly, exactly the same. In it. Yep. The point I completely understand is that in the standard Euler equation, ct is moving continuously. Here, the probabilities are just defined at the discrete uh, state. So you but have a, a discrete set. Uh, the, the state variables are in the discrete. But for each possible uh, state, we have a continuous variable. What we are changing is each possible choice probability. Then we have a huge multidimensional uh, continuous decision problem. Right, but it makes the problem a little bit different from the usual Euler it's setting since the asset, the state variable in the Euler equation setting is continuously distributed and the decision variable is continuously distributed. That's what, in okay. In case, it, they are discretely distributed and wondering if there was any problem. Is, uh, one of the problems is that we cannot use the standard, the most standard approach of obtaining the first order conditions of optimality, then using the envelope condition and solving in some sense the envelope condition in the first order condition of the, the optimality. We cannot use that approach to derive the, this type of Euler equation. Okay? The conditions to apply that, that, that approach don't, do not hold here. But it doesn't mean that we don't have these this Euler equations. There is this alternative constraint optimization approach to construct the Euler equation. So by that, you, even if the value functions aren't globally concave because of all this discrete choice stuff, everything you've got goes through. Exactly. Uh, well, we need, this is a primitive of the model. This, uh, these transition probabilities are primitives of the model. Uh, the full run condition that we need here, in some sense, is, is some, some is, is what? Well, it is a stationarity condition. Yeah? Well, it's some, it is a stationarity condition in the sense of, of the finite state dependence, is that if you deviate probabilistically uh, today, okay, eventually you can come back to the same state that if given a choice probability today and if you perturb this choice probability, okay, at the end you can end up uh, after a finite number of periods in the same distribution of the state variable. Okay? Basically, what we need is that these, there are some values here that can satisfy this condition. That's, that's basically the, 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 the condition that we need, yeah, that this is not an empty, empty set. Yeah? More like a recurrence uh, property. Yes, it's a recurrence property. Uh, not in the sense uh, everything I could put uh, T's everywhere in this probability, these transitions here and here. So that is a yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to impose a stationarity now in the in the in the solution in the policy iteration mapping, but but so far for the derivation of the Euler equation we don't need it. Yeah. Okay, this is an example of, uh, it's just one, one of the examples of, of, for the structure of, of, the, of the Euler equation, just to, to illustrate that these Euler equations have a very simple form, okay? This is a dynamic multibanded problem. We can think in, in a firm who has to decide in which market to operate, and there are J plus one possible markets, 
And the key condition here is that the only endogenous state variable is what is the market where the firm was at previous period. This is also an occupational choice model or a mo model that we have in many different applications of dynamic models in, in economics. Well, this is the general form of the Euler equations in this model that says that basically the uh, sum of the payoff today, where this is the expected value of the epsilon if alternative A is chosen today, plus the future payoff if alternative A is chosen today, and then we move to alternative zero, should be exactly the same as uh, under the optimal choice. We cannot get any gain fr from this one period deviation as if we choose alternative zero today and alternative zero in the future. It's like at the optimal choice probabilities, we cannot get any, any, any gain from deviating one, one period from this. Basically, every choice alternative should give us the same value of this, okay? Uh, for different distributions of unobservables, we have different functions for this ET. Uh, we know that for the stream value distribution, we have this, this one. In general, by, by Hodge-Miller inver inversion property, we know that this is a function of the distribution of the unobservables and the choice probabilities. And this is the function, the specific function for the stream value distribution, okay? Then we can take these conditions and then define an estimate, okay? And then we will have an Euler equations um, GMM estimator for this type of discrete choice model, okay? Then we have that we from, this moment, uh, from this Euler equation, we can define moment conditions uh, the expected value at period t of some a function. This function, for instance, in the previous example, has this form, is equals to zero. Given some instruments, some functions of x, we can construct this sample, and given a sample, we have construct this sample moment conditions, and then we can define uh, the estimator of the parameter theta as the value that minimizes this uh, GMN criterion function, okay? Um, the only difference with, the, with respect to the standard uh, GMM uh, Euler equation estimator is that we need to estimate P in the first step, okay? Uh, we need to estimate the choice probabilities, okay? This is particular, Hodge-Miller estimator can be seen as a particular version of one of the Hodge-Miller estimator, okay? And this is, can be seen also as, as a, as a, as a dynamic extension of, of a type of estimator developed a long time ago by Thiel and Bergson for, um, for a, st a static discrete choice model, okay? This way of inverting the probabilities and getting basically a function of the probabilities uh, as a function of the payoff functions and, and, and basically solving, estimating these by OLS, for instance, is what is, was called the, the Thiel version estimator that comes from the, from the 50s, in fact, okay? Okay, then uh, advantages of this method uh, and limitations of this method. Uh, no need to compute value functions, no uh, uh, course of dimensionality. We can estimate using this approach the computational cost is the same regardless of the dimension of the state space. We need to esti estimate choice probabilities only at those states that are visited in the data at period t and at period t plus one, but not at other states. And simple way to deal with non-stationarity. And basically similar, if not the same advantages as in the continuous choice Euler equations approach. Limitations. Finite sample properties, the estimation of the CPCPs could be can be very imprecise if the, the dimension of the state space is large. Uh, and we are back also to the problem, what if we want to, to make counterfactual experiments using this estimated model, okay? And that this is, these limitations are what motivate the next part of the paper, okay? Or second part of the paper, okay? That's a, good, that's, that's a good point. In principle, it's not obvious that we are exploding the same type of information as in a full solution method. Uh, 
in general, these this, this conditions, uh, we can think in the typical index uh, x times theta here, no, or x times theta a here. We are, to, for identification, we are going to, to, we will need the same type of restrictions as we, we need for, for, for a full solution method. And I doubt that, a beta typically we do not, and we do not estimate it, okay. But yes, beta is not identified. Okay, then to deal with these two limitations, to try to improve the finite sample properties and also to have a procedure to, to, to do counterfactual experiment using Euler equations, we uh, developed this Euler equation policy iteration mapping. And let me illustrate it in the context of this very simple example, the multibanded type of, of, of problem, okay? And then we have these Euler equations that we have de derived here. And what is the policy iteration mapping is just using this equation and solve for the choice probabilities at period t as a function of everything else, okay? And in general, what we are going to, to get is, well, in this example, what we get is, uh, and in any example that involves uh, a stream value distributed and observables, what we are going to get is that solving for the choice probabilities at period t in terms of the, of the all the rest elements of the model give us this multinomial logic type of expression, okay? Where we have payoffs at period t, and expected values of some payoffs at period t plus one, and choice probabilities at period t plus one, okay? Uh, okay, then we have this, uh, okay, this defines uh, a fixed point problem in terms of choice probabilities at period t plus one t are functions of choice probabilities at period t plus one. Sorry, I'm a bit lost. So sure. why is the profit given action A and, and state x t? And then you have a pi with three uh, variables, so... Okay, good, good point. Uh, here, I'm not distinguishing between endogenous state variables and exogenous state variables. Here, I'm distinguishing between the endogenous state variable, that is the action at previous period, and all the rest state variables that are the exogenous ones. Okay. That's good. Yeah. okay, then we have this mapping, <coughs> and it's possible to define the vector of choice probabilities under the stationarity. The vector of choice probability should be a solution to this uh, fixed point problem. Okay? Then for the multinomial logit, for the binary logit, and for the binary probit, what we saw is that this mapping is a contraction mapping. It has a unique solution, and therefore this unique solution should be also the solution of our original problem. Then this mapping gives us a way of competing the solution of the uh, dynamic programming problem, okay? And, okay, but notice that in contrast to the uh, standard policy iteration mapping where we have to calculate value function, given a vector of choice probability today, we have, or given a candidate <coughs> vector of, of equilibrium or optimal choice probability, we have to calculate, to evaluate basically, and calculate value functions for each possible, for this vector of choice probabilities and for each possible fa uh, action today. Here, all what we have to do is to calculate expected values today of choice probabilities tomorrow. There is not a present value evaluation. It's just one period ahead, expected values of these choice probabilities. And if you have an observer of an HP, then in HP it's not going to work uh, as an HP. Uh, you can't solve, you can't solve uh, that easily in this case. Well, here if we have an observatory gen 80 of finite mixture type, what we will have here is everything is conditioned. We are not going to, uh, going to integrate over the, the, the finite mixture and observed heterogeneity. Everything is going to be conditioned on each type. And therefore, we will have a different mapping for each type of individual. <coughs> but everybody will be the same, but put here an index for, for, for the type. OK. Sorry? We use, no, 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 that, exactly. You, 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 <laughs> we use your, your finite mixture method, okay? 
perhaps not yours, but uh, Casa Harens y Mots. Yeah, the idea, uh, the, 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 the counterpart of this method with a, a, an observatory genetic, in the first step we, we, we use a finite mixture model to estimate the choice probability, we plug them in here and then we don't have to integrate over the unobservatory genetic. Okay, um, based on this, um, based on this policy iteration, Euler, Euler policy iteration mapping, we can define a, a family of estimator that is basically the same as the family of estimator that uh, I have defined in my in my work with Pedro, but where instead of the a standard policy iteration mapping, we use here the uh, Euler equation policy iteration mapping, okay? And then we can define a sequence of estimator. We est start with some initial non-parametric estimate of, the, uh, of P, given P, we plug it in here, we estimate theta, estimating he theta here is, is, is basically an, an, an OLS regression. Uh, given theta, we can plug in this theta in our Euler equation, in our, our policy iteration mapping, we obtain new choice probabilities and so on, okay? And notice that this, okay, to implement this, this iteration in the choice probability should be only in a states, this is very different and also to the case of the, of the, of the standard policy iteration or standard MPL method, we have to calculate, recalculate this choice probability only at the states that we observe in the data, not for the whole state space, only at those states that we observe in the data. Then this vector of choice probabilities has dimension equals to the data, to the states that we observe in the data, okay? Much simpler than the, uh, uh, than the other MPL approach, okay? Then, we saw that all these estimators in this sequence are consistent, um, asymptotically normal, but not asymptotically efficient. Uh, we saw that the asymptotic variant and finite sample properties decline with, with the number of iterations because the contraction property, the sequence converge, but in contrast to the single agent case using the standard policy iteration where we converge to the maximum likelihood estimator, that's not the case here. There is an efficiency loss an asymptotic efficiency loss of using this Euler equation method instead of the standard policy iteration. Sorry, you're back to estimation now. I'm back to estimation here, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's an alternative to what you were uh, proposing before. That's exactly, that's, that's a way to, to improve the finite sample properties and the asymptotic variance uh, as well, okay? By iterating in this procedure, we are going to improve asymptotic variance and finite sample properties. Okay. And of course, this is for single agents. We know that this is going to converge now because the, 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 the contraction property, of course, in games, that is not going to be the case necessarily. Okay. That's, yeah, yeah, you're completely right. Using, using these two iterations, we can define um, a compose mapping where we iterate in P, basically. Because that we take this theta as a function of PK, P, K yeah, minus one and solve it here. That's a, that's a different mapping, exactly. That's a different mapping. If we look at the, at, the, at the Jacobian matrix of this mapping, it's possible to show that the Jacobian matrix, uh, the Jacobian of this, of this mapping is the product of, uh, of two matrices, okay? The Jacobian of this matrix, the Jacobian of, this, of, the, of our original mapping that we know that is a contraction, then all the eigenvalues here are in the unit circle, and the Jacobian of, uh, of an uh, ident idempotent matrix, okay? Okay, then, 
there are conditions under which, uh, okay, this is this is this is going to be given that this is uh, 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 the upper of a stable. That is, all the eigenvalues are in the unit circle, and this is uh, an idempotent matrix. This is all. All the eigenvalues are also in the unit circle. Okay. Okay. Now uh, it's true that that. Um, that this is asymptotically, in the sense asymptotically, for a very large sample. It could be that for a small sample, perhaps this, this, this is not the case, OK? OK, Le uh, sample-based computation of counterfactuals. Um, we still have, for the computation of, of an equilibrium here or a solution of the model, we still have that, that uh, if we have a very large state space, um, we need uh, to solve these expectations. And we have, if you want, a course of dimensionality that doesn't come from the computation of present values, but it comes from the computation of expectations, of one period expectations over a very large uh, state space, okay? Then to deal with this uh, dimensionality problem, we are going to replace these expectations in the true uh, Euler Poly iteration mapping by sample based versions of these expectations. That is, expectations using only the data. Okay? Okay, then uh, suppose that set N is the values the set of values of the exogenous state variables that we observe in our data set uh, at period t plus one, given that we observe set t at period t, then we are going to replace the true expectation by this sample uh, version of the expectation of this function h of set t plus one, where what we are doing is averaging just over the sample, over the values of set t plus one that we observe in our sample. Okay, and this is the sample-based Euler uh, policy iteration mapping. Well, what we have done is just to replace the true expectation by this sample-based expectation. Okay. Uh, what are the this prop the properties of this uh, sample-based Euler policy iteration mapping? Is also a contraction mapping. The evaluation of this mapping even does not suffer from any course of dimensionality because we are just averaging over the sample. And uh, a fixed point of this sample-based policy iteration mapping is possible to show that is a root and consistent and asymptotically normal estimator of the fixed point of the true mapping. And we have a method to construct counterfactual, uh, counterfactual that is for any value of theta that is not the estimated one, but any hypothetical value of theta, we can use this, uh, this sample-based uh, policy iteration mapping to construct a consistent estimator of the, of the counterfactual. Numerical experiments. Um, we use a, a simple model of, uh, of market entry and exit. The only state variable is, the, the, is a binary choice. The only state variable is the indicator of whether the firm was in the market at previous period or not. The value of being of not in the not being in the market is zero. The value of being active in the market um, depends on on the on whether the firm was in the market before or not, and it depends on on several exogenous state variables. We consider four different exogenous state variables that can affect the variable profit, the fixed cost, and the entry cost, okay? And, well, five, because we have a, something like a productivity here, okay? We assume that all these exogenous state variables follow uh, autoregressive processes. Uh, the first thing that we do is to compare the, um, the convergence properties of the, uh, of or the contraction properties of our policy iteration, Euler policy iteration mapping and the standard policy iteration mapping. These are what are called the Lipschitz constant that are measures of how strong is the, is the contraction mapping. The smaller is this, this constant, the stronger is the contraction and therefore the faster is going to be the convergence to the fixed point. 
okay? And these are the Lipschitz constant for our mapping. This is the Lipschitz constant for the standard policy iteration mapping. The standard policy iteration mapping is a stronger contraction. It's going to converge faster than our method. It's going to require less policy iterations than our method. We will require more. And there is a trade-off here. Each of our iterations is much cheaper, but we will need more iterations, OK? And let's see what we get in the, in the, in the race between these two, two mappings. These are the number uh, for different dimensions of the state space. These are the number of iterations that we need for convergence. These are the number of iterations for the standard policy iteration. These are the seconds per iteration. In our, in our case, these are the seconds per iteration in policy iteration. They increase much, much faster at the end, taking together the number of iterations and the uh, iteration per second. Our method that's, uh, that's substantially better, 17 times uh, faster. And in fact, we have proof with even larger. And this increases monotonically with the dimension of the state space. The larger is the dimension of the state space, the larger is going to be the difference here, while this difference stays constant, basically. The number of iterations that we need is more or less the same, is not r more, that we need more relative to the standard policy iteration does not increase with the dimension of the state space, but the difference between these two numbers increases very rapidly with the dimension of the state space, okay? We compare also with respect to, uh, to, to value function iteration. Uh, our Euler equation mapping is a stronger contraction than value function iteration. Then we are going to need less iterations than value function. In terms of computational cost per iteration, they are similar, Euler equation iteration and value function iteration. Then here, the main gains come from the fact that we need less number of, uh, of iterations relative to value function iteration, okay? It's, it's kind of uh, weird because, I mean, it's just a uh, 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 change in variable, uh, basically, uh, sort of. Uh, how, how can you explain why you, you have such things? Uh, no, I can, I, can, I can give you a guess, <laughs> is that, uh, okay, basically what we have is, 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 a, is, a, is a mapping that is in the space of choice probabilities, in our case. Then basically we have like a double discounting, okay? When we take the derivative of the, of the mapping with respect to the choice probabilities, we are going to have something like the discount factor times a probability itself. Well, in value function iteration, the only discounting that we have is, uh, is with respect to the discount factor, okay? Uh, this is just, just a guess, of course. We don't have, I think that that's a very good question. We, it will be good, good to, to, to try to have a, to see if this is a general result or not. Yeah. There is more discounting, exactly. Yes. You could, but in principle, unless the problem has a particular structure, is not something that can be parallelized. It's, it's, it's really a sequential. It's really a sequential procedure. To have the full solution, you need to know the value function everywhere. You know. Okay, we also uh, look at, uh, how much time do we have? Nothing, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we also present some Monte Carlo experiments where we uh, basically, we, we consider, a, 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 we, we evaluate our... Uh, We compared our sample base uh, uh, Euler equation mapping to evaluate a counterfactual experiment with the um, a, a standard uh, policy iteration mapping. 
but we keep the computational cost constant. Okay, then basically we are using our Euler equation in our, in our sample and then here we are using a discretization of the state space together with the standard policy iteration mapping such that given this discretization we have the same computational cost for the two methods. Okay, then given the same computational time, what, how precise are the, uh, eval the estimation of the, uh, of the true effect of a particular policy, in this case the effect of increasing the entry cost in the market. Okay? Then these are the true values, these are the average root mean square error, this is the average uh, mean absolute bias. We see that, uh, for instance, in terms of mean square error, the standard method for the average treatment effect give us six times the uh, root mean square error. Okay? Then keeping constant the same computational cost, our method implies a substantial uh, improvement in the precision of the of the evaluation of the of the counterfactor. Okay, and yeah, let me conclude here. No, in the, it's the, what what. What happened is that for the contraction, we have basically only results so far for the, for the extreme value distribution uh, and for the probit case. For the binary case, we have some conditions on the distribution that should be satisfied to have the contraction, okay? Because basically, it's a, it's a con condition on the hazard, the hazard function of the distribution. This is going to be satisfied by the logic, that by, the, by the probit and by other distributions. I think that it's going to be very difficult to, to generalize the results to other multinomial choice models which are not the, 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 the same value multinomial. Okay.